to my channel. So today's video is all about this bad boy right here. It is the St. Moritz Darker Than Dark One Hour Fast Tan. Now, if you've watched my favourite video, you will know this is my go-to self-tanner at the moment and has been for about a year now. It is my favourite self-tanner. The reason why is it's an express. So if you don't know what an express tan is, it basically means that you can put the tan on, leave it on to one, maybe two or three hours depending on how deep you want that tan to be at the end of the road. So for me, I leave it on for three hours. The reason why I leave my tan on for three hours is, say I have an event on a Sunday, maybe I'm going to a Holy Communion, and I will put the tan on on the Friday. I will then not touch tan the Saturday and just exfoliate the skin, keep it nice and moisturised. And then by the Sunday, it's settled into place and is in a nice shade for me. I'm not a tanning a holic. I'm not someone who wears false tan all the time. I literally wear tan only now. I've only started to really wear it in the past two years. And the reason being is my skin has always been pale, very porcelain, but skin that tans very, very dark. So I can go in the sun and catch the sun on my shoulders, but because my legs are never out, they never see daylight that much. So I can end up with shoulders one colour, my back a little bit deeper, my chest a little bit darker, my arms nice and tanned, my neck always stays white and my legs take longer to tan. So for me, sometimes it's just easier to throw on false tan and even out that whole situation. That's the only reason why I put it on and I don't tend to do it if most of my body is covered. I do only tend to do it when I'm going out on a night out and or I'm going to a special event and I've got more of my body on show than normal. So say I've got like a nice little strappy dress on or something, that's when I'll put tan on. So for me, I'm not a, a die hard tan person. So to buy something that's 2 99 from the home and bargain, you can get elsewhere. I'm not too sure how much it is from other places. From the home and bargain, it is 2 99 and that's where I go and purchase it every single time. I just go there because it's easier and I know it's going to be on the shelf. But for 2 99 I'm not going to worry about if I don't use it for six months and it needs to go in the bin. It wasn't a £15 bottle of tan. For example, if I bought a Bondi Sands one, which their Express is not very good, by the way, so don't waste your money. £15 tan, £19 tan, I'd be a bit more annoyed because I don't use it that much. But this is a godsend. I'm always on time restraints, so for me, there's nothing better than knowing on a Friday night, I can come home from work and I will pop the tan on, go about my evenings as I need to, nip the shop if I have to, have my tea, get my stuff ready for the next day, go in the shower, wash it off, moisturise my body, jump into bed and in the next morning, I'll have a nice tan. I can't think of anything worse than sleeping in tan. I absolutely hate it. I can't sleep in tan. It stinks. It makes you feel sticky. I feel like you've got to make sure your room's nice and cold in order to make sure that it doesn't run or get streaky or sticky again. It's just an effort, an absolute effort when it's a, a gradual mousse. So that's why I've always preferred an express tan. So if you want a really light tan with this, leave it on for one hour. If you want a medium tan, leave it on for two. And if you want it to be a little bit deeper, then leave it on for three. You can use this daily if you wanted to. If you wanted to make get even darker, you could use it the next day and build on top of it. I never really do. I pop it on, I could say pop it on a Friday if I had two back-to-back -back weekends of events. Pop it on the Friday and I won't do it again till the next Friday. That's enough for me. I know not everyone's like me though, so it depends how you are is how you're going to use this product. But for me, it is the best tan. I've never had a streak from it. I've never had any like big patches that I can get off other... Um, self tanners however it is like every other self tanner if you don't exfoliate and keep your skin nice and moisturized it will cling to those dead skin cells and you will see that in this video because I put a foot peel on my feet about two weeks ago and it takes a week to kick in and now my feet are peeling so I've covered my feet as best as I can so you don't have to look at that peeling skin but you will see on the top of my foot what it looks like when you don't exfoliate your skin and you don't keep on top of them dead skin cells. So making sure that's all gone before you put tan on is so, so important. But the best thing about this is you are going to wash it off as your usual way of washing. Mine is a puff ball and some shower gel and giving my body a good scrub. Making sure all that tan's gone, you're going to jump out, lather yourself in moisturiser and you're going to get into bed. However, one big tip from me to you is do not sell tan your face, only tan from your neck down. Also, if you are going to tan, start from your toes and upwards. The reason why you want to start from your toes upwards is when you bend forward to do your shin area or your feet, 
if you started from the neck down, the tan that's already on your belly and your boobs and your arms is now gonna touch your legs and you're gonna lean onto your thigh before you reach your thigh. So my recommendation is toe to neck, but don't ever do your face. It clogs up your pores. It's really, really bad for your skin. So just leave the face alone and pop, pop it up to the neck and then just get a dark foundation. That's my biggest tip anyway. Um, and yeah, that's basically it on the tips. Just make sure you're exfoliated. Leave it on for one, two or three hours. I have left it on for three hours in this video, but you will see that in a minute. And yeah, personally, I think it's the best tan. So I'm just going to show you what it turns out like on my legs and talk you through how I apply it and stuff. And yeah, let's just get straight into the actual reviewing part. First things first, you need a tan and mitt and some gloves. So when you are using the gloves, just give them a rinse afterwards and you can use the same pair over and over again. Once you've applied your glove and then your tan and mitt, you're going to give your bottle of self-tan a really good shake. Make sure the product is mixing together inside that bottle. And then you are going to pump that mousse onto the tan and mitt. As you can see, it is dark very 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 dark then we're going to apply this directly to my sexy pale pasty chicken legs and as you can see it's got that green tinge i was telling you about although it's dark it does have a green tinge now i don't understand how this green tinge doesn't affect the tan for whatever reason you apply it and there's no green tinge on your leg when you wash it off there's no green tinge that even appears the next day it must just be because it's an express tan, I'm not too sure. But as you can see, I'm taking circular motions and working that tan into my leg, going down to my foot, bringing it up, and then doing around the calf and all the way up the back of the thigh. Making sure I use the circular motions, but as well as circular motions, using straight line motions as well. I feel that going between the two makes the tan sit better. It makes sure there's no streaks, no patches. It's just so much better when you go between circular motions and straight line, like vertical lines up your leg. Just making sure that you don't miss any part of your legs or body in that, for that matter, depending on where you are tanning. But with the colour of this tan, I'm pretty sure you're not going to miss any of your body because it is dark. Then, as you can see, I've swapped onto my other leg. If you're wondering why there is patches on my foot, it is the peel I was talking about in the video earlier. It just basically is clinging to, to those dry skin areas. But there's nothing I can do about that because I am using a, a peel mask to peel the dead skin off my feet. And that's the tan pretty much done before I leave it for three hours. As you can see a lot better in this footage here, the tan is really clinged to those dead skin cells on my foot. But again, if you have used a, a chemical peel or any sort of foot peel on your feet at the moment, that is going to happen. It hasn't happened anywhere else on my leg. I mean, there is some bruising on my leg. I do apologise. But there's no other dry patches on my legs because I always ensure that my skin is exfoliated and moisturised as best as possible before applying. And then as you can see, I'm just pointing at the difference in colour and the difference in skin texture just so you can see how important it is to exfoliate. I can't stress that enough. This is my leg just before I jumped in the shower, three hours after applying it, as you can see, nice and dark, got a green tinge to it, looking sexy as ever. And then this is my leg after the shower with moisturiser all over it. So nice and pale again, <laughs> doesn't even look like I've applied any tan. Um, as you can see on the dry patches of my foot, it has clung still to those areas. There was nothing, again, I could do about that just because of the foot peel. There are some bruises on my legs, by the way, so do excuse them. And then this is my leg the morning after. As you can see, it's a much nicer tan colour. You can definitely see it when you see the sides of my feet and how white my feet are. You can see how much it's gone a nice golden colour. I am going to try and do this as a before and after photo just so you can see it but yeah just make sure if you're going to use this tan that you exfoliate and it will turn out really nice and it's really quick and really easy. So yeah, I hope that video helps if you have been on and on and whether to purchase this time or how to apply it and why it's so dark, so on and so forth. And yeah, I hope this video has helped anyone who's thinking of buying the St. Marit. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, do the full shebang, and I'll see you soon. Bye.